So I've been spending a lot of the last few weeks playing Hogwarts Legacy, and it sent me down this kind of Harry Potter phase that I've been in and out of since I was a kid. You know, the one that most of us go through every now and then. One where we start picking up random objects that look like wands and screaming Avada Kedavra at anything that moves. Avada Kedavra! No, just me. Well, either way, over the last couple of weeks, I've done solo reviews for every Harry Potter film on both my YouTube and my TikTok, so go follow me on both, by the way. And now I want to rank all these movies and see which one is truly the best. This will also include the Fantastic Beasts films, because why the hell not? Trust me, we're going to get those ones out of the way really early. Before I start, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, spoiler warning is ahead. I'm going to be spoiling some of these movies, so beware. So I really don't think there's a terrible film in this entire franchise, but Crimes of Grindelwald is certainly the worst. This is what you get when you have so many ideas for a story and a film, but you have no idea how to structure those ideas into a two-hour movie. This film does so much in such a little amount of time. Way too much. When making a film, I always feel like the best thing to do is to focus on something, an idea, a character, a theme, and fully develop that to its fullest. The film focuses on about 50 ideas, all of which might have been cool if they had been focused on, but put together it creates this disjointed and messy movie that almost doesn't even have a story. I have no idea what happens in the first two acts of this film. At the start of the third act, we get a very long exposition scene that went on for way too long, it was so head-scratching, and I felt like the movie was just like, hey, this is what you need to know to understand the next scene. The finale is okay, with Johnny Depp's performance as Grindelwald definitely being memorable, but once he leaves, like, Newt and the rest of the forgettable characters in this movie have an epic battle with fire. <laughs> like, what? I don't know, man. This film is just not great to me. It's not a total dumpster fire, which really shows how great this universe has been. It's certainly no Rise of Skywalker, like a pile of useless horse shit, but it's definitely the worst in the franchise. <laughs> I honestly cannot tell you anything that happens in this movie. It's one of the most forgettable films of all time, in my opinion. I just know that, like, Eddie Redmayne's character is tracking the Fantastic Beasts, and Colin Farrell is playing Grindelwald for some reason, and then Johnny Depp is Grindelwald, and then there's, like, mind-wiping rain or some shit. I don't know, man. Like, this film lacks the magic that the previous Harry Potter films, the whole Harry Potter franchise has. I think, you know, stepping away from Hogwarts and stepping away from the child aspect of the thing, the magic of childhood, really took away from this film, and they haven't really nailed how to do these older characters characters in this outside of Hogwarts wizarding world type stuff just yet. But I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. This movie confuses me. I'm not sure why it exists, as there was not nearly enough source material in the first half of the book to sustain a fully coherent movie, and man, it really shows. This thing is slow, and although I like that the characters feel extremely vulnerable in this thing, and human, something that's not really shown a lot throughout the rest of the franchise, it's just so freaking boring, man. I've fallen asleep to this movie more times than I can remember. I literally can't remember half of what happens in this one. I mean, the ending sequence is great, though, and Dobby's death, for the most part, is impactful. There are definitely some good moments, like infiltrating the Ministry of Magic, but man, it's just a slog to get through a time. This is easily the best film in the Fantastic Beasts franchise so far, and that's really not saying much. This film is incredibly disjointed and tells an almost illogical story. It also introduces aspects of the Wizarding World that sort of contradicts stuff from both the Potter films and the source material. But unlike the other Fantastic Beasts films, this one is at least entertaining. It doesn't feel like a chore to get through, and it's mostly because it has some really good fights, some of the best fights of the universe. Mads Mikkelsen is great as Grindelwald, and taking over for Johnny Depp, who was wrongfully fired, is almost an impossible task, but he does a good job. His dynamic with Jude Law's Dumbledore is amazing, and easily the biggest draw of this trilogy so far. It's just like, you know, Newt. What, what the hell is he doing here? His characters are so forced into this story, and I'm not sure why they didn't just make this whole franchise revolve around a young Dumbledore. Because his relationship with Grindelwald, that's the reason why we're coming. That is the good shit of this franchise. This film is fine. It introduces us to a lot of cool things in the Harry Potter universe and gives us some background on Voldemort in this early part of the story. But I think the film is just way too long and it doesn't nearly do enough to excite me. It is entertaining to see the cast go through their daily routine at Hogwarts and the Chamber of Secrets itself and the mystery surrounding it are definitely engaging. The film also has this young magic, this childhood magic that a lot of the other films in the franchise don't have since it took place very early on in this series. But I don't know, it's just a drag to get through. It's really, really long and just not that much happens. Admittedly, I haven't watched this film in a very long time, and I definitely haven't seen it nearly as many times as the other films, but I can still admit that it's a great introduction to the world and this universe. It's definitely a light, less mature version of this world, and we get to follow these kids as they adapt to life in Hogwarts. It's a fish-out-of-water story with Harry, somebody who's never seen the Wizarding World, truly entering and seeing all the customs and cultures that partake in it. This film is full of heart and lacks all of the dark and depressing vibes you get from the later films, but that's okay. None of the battles are anything special, and the villain is whatever, but the film serves its purpose. I'm ranking it over the Chamber of Secrets though because it does not feel like a drag. 
Hot take time. I really love this film. I understand it's straight from the books. It left out so much good content, but there's something about this movie that I love. It's a bridge film between the huge conflicts in the Order of the Phoenix to the coming battles in the Deathly Hallows. It's a film that focuses heavily on some of my favorite characters in the series, that being Snape and Draco. It also allows our characters to have one last Hogwarts type movie where we really just get to see them be students. We learn more about Voldemort and that finale. Man, it's so good in my opinion. Snape killing Dumbledore with that shiver in Alan Rickman's voice, which is just a perfectly performed scene. It just teases us to his true allegiance and the true feelings he had doing that to his, you know, to his friend Dumbledore. Harry's rage and chasing Snape after is just so good and Dumbledore's funeral scene, ah, oh, it's amazing. It sets up the next film so perfectly. Yes, the Ginny and Harry stuff is bad. Yes, the Ron and Hermione stuff is also cringy, but I don't care. This film is great. Conveniently placed at number four, the fourth Harry Potter movie gets a lot of hate, but I could not care less. I love this thing. It's dark, and it takes on this weird colorless look, which is definitely different from the previous films, but ultimately, this is the film that sets up those dark parts of this universe and introduces us to the evil that exists within the wizarding world. From start to finish in this film, there's a feeling that something is off, making all of the events feel like a ticking time bomb. I found the source of the ticking! It's a pipe bomb! Yay! Yay! This all builds to the Triwizard Tournament, which I thought was really well done, and ultimately all the way to the finale where we meet Voldemort for the first time, played brilliantly by Ray Fiennes. He makes an immediate impact, and his brief encounter with Harry sent shivers down my spine as a kid. We also have one of the saddest deaths in the series, and holy fuck is it hard watching Cedric's father scream out in pain after he sees his son dead. <laughs> this is my boy! <laughs> Bye -bye. What a scene, what a film, I love this thing. The first film in the franchise that truly said, buckle up because this franchise isn't just a cheesy school drama, but it's a large adventure that can sometimes have really dark undertones and also deliver a really mature story. This film completed what I call the introduction trilogy of the Harry Potter universe, in which we fully immerse ourselves in the wizarding world in preparation for the arrival of the big bad Voldemort. This film is amazing, introducing us to some of the best characters of the franchise, with Professor Lupin and Sirius Black brilliantly played by Gary Oldman. The story does include time travel aspects, which in my opinion is the worst possible thing you can include in storytelling, but I do think that the this thing is done perfectly here and it does not become a distraction or a plot hole. This is the first movie in the franchise where I really feel like these characters live in a dangerous world. Like the Dementors to me when I was a kid used to terrify me and keep me up at night. Same thing goes for Lupin's werewolf form, like I mean it's, it looks gnarly. But ultimately this film is insanely entertaining from start to finish and has a great finale, it's just one of the best Harry Potter movies. <laughs> This film is placing number two almost exclusively for its finale. The fight between Dumbledore and Voldemort is so freaking great and easily the best fight of the universe. I feel like the story of this one is so natural and unique, with the entire wizarding world rejecting the idea that Voldemort could have returned from the dead in the previous movie. Which in turn introduces us to much more opposition for Harry. He not only has to contend with the looming threat of Voldemort, but also members of the Ministry of Magic themselves. None more amazing than Professor Dolores Umbridge, who might just be the most evil character ever. The students forming the new Order of the Phoenix and training under Harry in the Room of Requirement has some of my favorite moments of the series. And I think a lot of the side characters finally get time to shine like Neville and Ginny. But that finale, man, it's so good and it really sets the stage for the final films in the franchise. This was also the debut film in the series from David Yates and his style would carry the rest of the franchise even into Fantastic Beasts. It's really hard to argue that this isn't the best Potter movie. It includes my favorite moments from the series, with Snape's memories being one of the top 10 cinematic moments ever. You can fight me on that. The film does something that many franchises fail to do. Taking a story that had been told over the course of many different films over a long period of time and creating a finale that was both satisfying and did not lead to the entire franchise nosediving straight into the earth with the fan base screaming about how incompetent the people involved were. Fuck you, Kathleen Kennedy. Instead, this film has an incredibly satisfying conclusion to this massive story and takes us on a non-stop ride for over two hours hours, which is mostly just a large battle at Hogwarts. Voldemort is so unhinged in this film, and I think Ray Fiennes gets his best performance of the series. The final fight between him and Harry could have definitely been a little bit better, but emotionally it was pulled off well. This film could have very easily have turned out terrible, which is why I think the fact that it is amazing is an achievement that should be celebrated. Easily to me, it's the number one Harry Potter movie. So that's the video. Make sure you subscribe here, make sure you follow me on TikTok, and let me know your rankings down below. And yes, I did make it through this entire thing without ever mentioning the controversial statements made by series creator.